Welcome to our lecture online. In order to understand the four thermodynamic potentials better, we need to understand the individual little portions making up those potentials. One of those is the concept of the internal energy. So what do we mean by internal energy? Well, it depends upon whether or not we're dealing with a gas or whether we're dealing with a liquid or a solid. But the basic principles are pretty well the same. The idea is that the internal energy of an object is contained within the motion of the atoms and molecules within that object. If it's a gas, it would be the atoms within the gas, and of course it would be moving individually from one another, so it would be the kinetic energy of the motion of the individual atoms or molecules of the gas. And if it's a substance, then it would be due to the vibrational motion. Of course, with a liquid, we have both the vibrational motion and the motion relative to each other as the atoms and molecules kind of roll over one another within the liquid. But the idea is the same. We can call it all a system, and it would be due to the combination of motion of the kinetic energy and the vibrational energy of the individual atoms within that system. So for a gas, the internal energy is defined by the letter U, and it's equal to N C sub V times T. N is the number of moles, C sub V is what we call the molar specific heat at constant volume, and T is considered the temperature in Kelvin. Typically, we're more interested in the change in the internal energy when there's, for example, a chemical reaction, or we heat a substance, or we cool a substance, or we allow a substance like gas to do work. We then see the change in internal energy, which is defined as N C sub V times delta T. The change in internal energy is only dependent on the change in the temperature, for a gas. For a solid or liquid, we use the equation, which is very similar, where U is equal to mc times T. So delta U, again, we're interested in the change in internal energy, is equal to mc times delta T. C is the specific heat for the substance, m is the mass in kilograms, and delta T is the change in temperature. So the only difference is that we have the mass here versus the number of moles, but the general idea is the same. The specific heat is defined as something in joules per kilogram per kelvin for that particular substance. Now notice for a gas, C sub V can take on different values depending upon what type of gas we're dealing with. If we're dealing with a monatomic gas, C sub V is 3 halves R, that would be 3 times a half R, which has to do with the, with the, internal, with the motion of the gas molecules. In, for a monatomic gas, you can only have translational motion. For a diatomic and triatomic mass, you can have a gas, I should say, not mass, but gas. For diatomic or triatomic gas, you can have different kinds of kinetic motion. We can have rotations and vibrations, and so therefore, the C sub V increases as the molecules become more complicated and have what we call more degrees of freedom. But in general, C sub V can be defined as 3 halves, 5 halves, or 7 halves for monatomic, diatomic, triatomic gas, with some subtle differences between the molecules. R is the gas constant to be 8.315 joules per mole times Kelvin. Now the internal energy of a gas depends upon, or at least the change in the internal energy of the gas, depends upon how much heat we add to the substance or how much heat we remove from the substance. The more heat we add, the more energy it has, the more heat we remove, the less energy it has. But it also depends upon the amount of work that the substance does. A gas or a substance like a liquid or solid can expand or contract with change in temperature. As it expands, it pushes away atmosphere. As it contracts, the atmosphere pushes down onto the substance. And so we have an additional term, which is called the work done by the system, which determines the change in the internal energy. So the internal energy change is equal to the amount of heat added or removed from the gas. If it's added, that goes up. If it's removed, that goes down, minus the work done by the gas or by the system. Even, even substances such as liquid and, and solids can expand and contract less, a lot less than gas, but in a way, by doing so, there's either work done by the system or work done on the system. So the work, under a condition where we have constant pressure, can be defined as P times delta V. The pressure times the change in the volume. The pressure typically caused by the atmosphere and then the change in the volume of the system or the substance. And so when you multiply these two together, that constitutes the work done either by the system or on the system. It's considered work done by the system when the system expands and pushes against the atmosphere, 
it's considered work done on the system when the atmosphere pushes down on the substance and the system shrinks in volume. So here we can see a schematic of that, which is what we call a pressure times volume diagram. If the final volume is less than the initial volume, when the process goes from right to left on the volume scale here, when therefore delta V is less than zero, that means the system is doing, oh, the atmosphere is doing work on the system, compressing the system, which means internal energy will go up as a result of that. So that would be considered negative work when, this, when the atmosphere is doing work on the system, that's considered negative work. Minus neg negative work means an increase in the internal energy. But if the system uses energy to expand its volume and pushing against the atmosphere, then indeed we have to subtract that work done from the, from the heat added to the substance to calculate the change in the internal energy. So bottom line, we add heat, internal energy goes up, we take heat away, internal energy goes down, the system or substance expands, therefore doing work on the system that makes the internal energy goes down, but if the internal in the atmosphere pushes down on the system and compresses it, then it does work on the system and then delta U goes up. And so that's what then defines the internal energy of the system and how the internal energy of the system changes. Two parts, heat added or subtracted, or work done by the system or work done on the system. This example here shows work done on the system, delta V goes down, it's less than, so the change is less than zero, it's a negative change, therefore causes the internal energy to go up. And that's how we define internal energy.